Welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. I'm the Bourbon Santa. My name is Austin Hubbard. Uh, people call me the Bourbon Santa because I tend to give away more whiskey than I drink. I also help people find bottles that they're looking for. I like uh, helping people's whiskey dreams come true. So today we're going to be trying something that I am so excited for. Um, I've always loved Smoke Wagon products. The bottles, to me, the bottle design is just gorgeous. Um, the first samplings that I ever had of Smoke Wagon were sent to me by a friend. And um, they sent me, it was actually, it was Jason C. Jason C. from Mash and Drum sent me a sampling of Smoke Wagon products. And up to that point, I had never had them. And I had the Smoke Wagon Uncut Unfiltered, which is what we're going to be trying today. And I had the Small Batch and the Desert Jewel. And I think there was one other. But of those four, my two favorites were the Desert Jewel and this Uncut Unfiltered, which was my favorite favorite. So ever since then, I've been on the hunt for bottles to have of my own. And I've had a few other sam samples sent my way by other friends and... I'm still in love with Smoke Wagon. Now, I have to say, the first time I tried it, I wasn't in love. But usually a two-ounce sample gives me about three different tastings. And so, on the first tasting, I was like, yeah, that's good, but it's reminding me too much of Texas whiskey. It's too burnt. It's too over the top. It's too oaked. Um, and I wasn't in love with it. And then, but then by the end of that first sample, the very last pour, I was in love. I, it had grown on me and I had just fallen in love with the flavors that it, it gave me. And, and so ever since then, I've been hunting bottles. And I was able to last week finally acquire, from some, with the help of some more friends, three bottles of uncut, unfiltered. All three are from different batches and we're going to try them all together and, and see how it goes. I'm super excited for this. So let's just do this. The first one is 56.95% uh, alcohol. Let's see how it smells. Oh. I get... I get red, like a red delicious apple peel. and cream and sugar and um, there's a breadiness um, like a shortbread that you would put like strawberries and, and cream and, and sugar on top of. The oak is there of course. Um, you can tell that this thing cooked in the Las Vegas sun. I mean it, it comes across that way but this one and I just opened these just before I started, just opened and poured, just before I started rolling the camera. And and these immediately, they don't need a minute, they don't need time to air in the glass and, and open up. Right off the bat, I'm getting amazing flavor out of this. There's a strong vanilla flavor. There's a hint of a chocolate. Um, there's also, I'm getting a hint of coffee bean. Maybe, there's a, an, another fruit, almost a grape, like a, have you ever seen the really weird looking midnight moon grapes? I think, I think that's what they're called. I can't think of the name of them, but they're a weird shaped grape. Oh, I'm getting a hint of that flavor. I'm going to taste it. Oh. See, that washes just over your soul and just, oh, and, and finish, the finish is, is going and going and going. Um, right off the bat. Wow. Okay. I'm going to do one more taste and then I'll go over some notes because there was so much going on there that it, it's hard to get my brain to slow down and categorize all that.
Okay. Cinnamon and syrup. Like if you took maybe not quite maple syrup, but a, a pancake syrup of some kind and mixed in some cinnamon because you get the feel of the cinnamon in the back of your throat on the back of your palate. And, the, and it's so creamy and oily and viscous on the, the mouthfeel that it reminds me of syrup. And, and that oak note is, of course, there. Oh, there's a dark cherry, but not like, not like a maraschino, like a dark, bit, one of the big, fat, dark cherries on the back end of the, of the palate. And, and there's a hint of tobacco. It's more the, the feel in my throat if I'm, if someone's like uh, smoking a cigar around me. The second hand feel, because I don't smoke cigars, not yet anyway, but um, the second hand feel of the cigar smoke in the air if you're sitting in a bar or in a, in a cigar lounge, it's, I get that feel in the back of my throat. It's not as much the, like the, the taste of the smell, just the feel. That is some damn solid MGP juice right there. I love this stuff. Okay, let's go to the second one. The second one is 56.85. I honestly I think it's an 85. Whoever wrote the um the percentage on this one, it almost looks like an E instead of an 8. But it could also be a nine. It's possible that these two are from the same batch. But by the time they got to handwriting this one, they were getting tired <laughs> or sick of writing it. And and so it, I think it's funny. I I don't know if the camera is going to focus on it, but I'll let you see. It looks like five, six, perfectly clear. And then E and then like the top half of a five, the top over and down of a five, but then not the the curl at the bottom. So it's possible that this one is the same batch as this one. We'll see here in a second. I don't know. We'll see if I can tell. Um, but my brain wants to read that as five, six, eight, five. So let's see. Oh yeah, no, they're different batches. Absolutely different batches. This one is rounder on the nose. This one's slightly sharper. There's a little more of that alcohol ding. This one's... Oh, wow. This one's got more caramel to the nose. Less, Definitely less alcohol ding. I, I can't imagine that I'm really smelling the difference of a tenth of a percent of alcohol difference but it's perceptible I, I feel the difference on my nose this one isn't burning my senses as much as that one does this one's like cinnamon toast like buttered cinnamon toast like a nice heavy bread with butter melted on it and and cinnamon on top The cream and sugar and, and, and strawberries are in the background. On the nose, I'm, I think this one's a little ahead. Let's taste it. Okay. This one is a little less lively on the taste but it's very it's it's softer and gentler on the nose and on the taste it, there's a little bit less going on yeah there's a little less going on here um it's it's still i mean it's still amazing but there's there's a little less happening this one is sweet oak 
and that toasted bread is there. Um, the cinnamon is there. It's not quite as put together. It's it's almost like on the nose there in as I mentioned before in other videos, I see smells. My brain like processes them into pictures. I, I have a photographic memory and and I'm, I'm a very visual person. So my brain processes smells into imagined pictures. And and so on the nose for this one. I'm picturing that bread with the butter and the cinnamon on top. I can see it sitting there on a saucer plate. On the taste though, it's like the cinnamon and the toast are separate. They're sitting next to each other on the counter. Somebody hasn't put the cinnamon on yet on the taste. Yeah. The table's made of the sweet oak. The toast is sitting there. The cinnamon's separate. The, the dark cherry isn't there on the back end of the palate. And the tobacco feel in my throat is not there on this one. But it's still good. That's really good. <clears throat> it's, it's still very pretty. This is, strangely enough, for being an uncut, unfiltered, cast-strength whiskey, this one is easier to sip it's not it's not as complex it's not it doesn't have quite as much happening it doesn't have as much alcohol burn um even though it's a minuscule difference between the two there's a significant difference perceived on the nose and on the palate that's really interesting wow so now we're going to go to the third one which is the highest proof so far at 57.3 Oh, what is that? Have you ever had, a, it's a dessert, it's like a, a tart dessert with all the berries on top. It's like a cream tart dessert. They either come round or oblong. Um, here in Florida, we have a, a grocery store called Publix and they sell them and and then some, you know, the Italian grocery stores also sell them. And they're a round fruit tart with all the fruit on the top. Man, that's what I'm getting on the nose of this. I'm getting the fruit. There's blueberries on there. There's raspberries. There's, you know, a whole blend of, of fruit on top. And that creamy tart. And then the bread, the bready bottom is there. Well, that's wonderful. The breadiness was really, really there. It's a shortbread kind of breadiness. It's really right there on the top of of your impressions from it. It's it's un unmistakable. The cinnamon is dialed way back on this one. There's there's nothing objectionable on the nose. There's, there's no burn. There's, this one might be even milder on the nose than this one. Hmm, about the same alcohol wise. But this one definitely has more going on. All right, I'm going to taste this one and see. See where we're at, and then we'll go back through the other way. Oh, wow. <clears throat> oh, wow. That was good. Holy crap. This, this third one, it's got the super viscous, enveloping mouthfeel. It makes your mouth water. Like, my mouth is watering like crazy right now. And, and it just washes over you with honey and hang on, I'm going to, I'm going to do one more. Oh yeah. It's like somebody took a plank of, of an oak stave out of a barrel. It's all toasted on the inside, not toasted, charred on the inside and just smeared butter over it and then smeared honey over top of that. And then 
that is so juxtaposed with the nose. The nose is fruit tart, the creaminess, the breadiness, and then the, the taste. I don't pick up the fruit. I pick up the oak and the and just creamy butter and, and honey. Yeah. There's a little bit of oak bitter there, but not not in, a, in an offensive way. It's just there. It's letting you know it's there, and, and it's showing up. The barrel char is there. This one is really interesting because the nose is wildly different than the taste. Um, wow. Wow, that was great. So I'm going to go back to taste number two again, and we're going to kind of compare these a little bit. Okay, this one, the middle one, the 56.85, I think, proof one, the nose is amazing. The nose on that one is really nice. It's all dark and, and, and round and just pretty and, and, and more simple and, you know, and not, it's not real complex. It's just simple and pretty and it just is showing you a few things. To me, this one's a, just an easy sipper. <clears throat> Man, this first one, the 56.95%. This nose is just gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm getting more of that strawberry now, that dark fruit. Maybe even plum. I'm thinking even a little bit of plum. I can't tell if it's plum or nectarine. Because to me, they, they kind of feel a little similar. Oh. That dark cherry is just right there in the back of the palate. Wow. Wow. You can't go wrong with any of the three. Um, the first one that I tried, I think, I think is my favorite because of that dark cherry note at the back. It's right at the end of the palette, right when you're when you're right as you're swallowing, all of a sudden the dark the dark cherry just shows up and is is really pronounced and really jumps out at you, and so it almost hits you as a surprise because you're not expecting it. You know, you got all the other things going on on the nose and then a whole thing on the palate. And then right as it's transitioning from the palette into the finish, boom, a big dark cherry note, which is really an interesting thing on this expression, in this version. But back for, but number three here, the 57.3%. These are just right in my wheelhouse for my palette. These just hit all the marks for me. You've got high proof, which of course I love. You've got super complex, super interesting. You know, I like it when there's a significant difference between the nose and the palette because then I'm, I, my range of experience is so much bigger. You know, if you get the exact same two or three notes on the nose that you get on the palette, okay. Maybe that's great, but when I'm getting a whole range of an experience on the nose, and then I go to a whole different range of experience on the palate, and and then within the same whiskey, three different versions of the same whiskey, I'm getting a wildly different perception between them. So to me, it's like you can't go wrong with any of the uncut, unfiltered smoke wagon products. And I've had several samples, which were probably all different batches as well. And every one of those I've fallen in love with. 
So I can't recommend Smoke Wagon uncut, unfiltered enough. And our fly friend is back. That's what I get for living on a farm. <laughs> so now that we've done that, I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for getting me to 700 subs on YouTube by my birthday, which was Sunday yesterday. Uh, today's Tuesday. Day before yesterday. Thank you for that. I, I'm so appreciative. And, and I really have to thank the Bourbon Junkies because they are a, a whiskey tube YouTubers that I have fell in love with. And before them, you know, I watched a lot of different whiskey tube channels and, and they were good. They were informative. You know, uh, it's Bourbon Night, the um, Whiskey Tribe, Whiskey Vault, you know, uh, Mash and Drum and so many others, and the Bourbon Junkies were the first YouTube page that I, I fell in love with, and and their community is so welcoming and so wonderful, and, and they are the ones that encouraged me to do this, to have my own YouTube account and start making videos, the community did, and and so in an homage to them and as a thank you to you guys, I'm going to do something terrible. I'm going to try Crown Royal Peach <laughs> in honor of Daniel Shook because one of the bourbon junkies, um, because he said he likes this stuff and, uh, so I figured I'd try it. I've never had it before. Long, long ago, before I really got into to whiskey, um, I had friends that would, that would shoot Crown Royal, and it, it would turn my stomach. It was the worst stuff ever. But that was before I ever got into whiskey. Back then, I was drinking rum and tequila and, you know, and, and vodka. And, and once I got into my... Um, late thirties is when I really got into whiskey and someday I'll tell you the story of why I didn't drink whiskey from the age of 16 to the late thirties, but uh, we'll save that for a different video. Um, someday when I review Jack Daniels. So in honor of Daniel and Sean, of course, I thought I'd, I'd do a little tasting on the crown Royal peach because Dan said he liked it, and it became a total huge meme inside the Bourbon Junkies community. Uh, if you aren't a member already of the Bourbon, if you aren't a subscriber to the Bourbon Junkies, please go do that. If you're not in the Bourbon Junkies Facebook group, look it up. Do that. The shirt is a Bourbon Junkies shirt. It's their Drowning Pheasant shirt. Um, go to their website, bourbonjunk.com, and, uh, and see what shirts they have available right now. So anyway... Let's try this blind reaction. I'm scared. It doesn't smell bad. It smells like peach. I don't really get much whiskey past the peach. I'm just getting the peach. It's kind of like just picking up a peach at the store and smelling it like I always do before I buy a peach. Maybe a little bit of um, syrup, like peaches in syrup, like sliced peaches, like you get in a can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not, yeah, like you get in a can, like canned peaches in the syrup. Let's try it. <laughs> this sucks I actually kind of like it <laughs> what the hell that's not bad I'm gonna have to have my wife try this when she gets home I would probably drink it on ice 
or maybe mixed into something like a tea. But you know what? That's not half bad. I mean, it's not great. It's not. It's very sweet. It's very very sweet. And and I really don't get much much whiskey at all. What? Oh yeah, it's only thirty five percent alcohol. It's sort of necessarily a whiskey to me. There's no alcohol at all in this. I mean, thirty five percent might as well be water. But it, if you added that to tea, I bet you that'd be pretty damn good. Well, that sucks. I was hoping to hate it. <laughs> so I'd have some cred, at least. Eh. I'm sure my wife's actually going to like that. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.